Now, the one thing I noticed when I dragged these items into the box is that they're all sort of snapping into place here in the center. Well, we can change that as well. We can change how these, how these items display. So go ahead and close the preview. And we're still in form view. So go up to drag and drop options. Now you can see there's a number of things we can do. One of the things we can do is here in this drop target options. So right now it's set to stack random. If I click the drop down menu, you can see that there are some additional options for how those items will be placed in our drop target. So what we want them to do so we can see each of them is tile. We want to tile the items so we can see each of the items that were dropped in the box. Go ahead and click OK. And let's go ahead and preview our slide. Now as I drag the items to the box, right, they should tile in the center of the box. Actually, they're not, right? They are tiling, but they're tiling based on the bounding box of the image. So the box image is actually much larger than the drop target that we want to use. And this is actually pretty common when you're building drag and drop interactions. You need to have a drop target, but when you place the object on the target, it's going to align based on the actual size of that image. So in this case, the bounding box for the image is much larger than the actual drop target, which is inside the box. So we can fix this by just creating a different drop target. We don't need to use the actual image. In this case, we can just create an invisible shape and have that sit inside the box, and that'll become our drop target. So let's take a look at how that works. Close your preview, and let's go back to the slide view. And here's our image. I'm gonna go ahead and just lock this image so I don't accidentally nudge it or move it. And now I can't move anything. So what we need is an invisible shape that just sits right here in middle of the box image, right? The image doesn't really matter to us as, other than just as a visual reference. What we need is just a target that's small enough so it fits inside the center of this open box image. And we can use a hotspot for that. So let's go up to insert, hotspot, and we'll choose the rectangular hotspot and just drag it around the inside of the box. And you can resize it if you need to. Now, a couple things when you're working with hotspots, they're typically set up to be interactive in the sense that you click somewhere on the slide. And you can see that over in the triggers panel where it automatically created a show layer for us. Well, in this case, that's not what we're doing. We're just gonna use this as a drop target, right? So we can delete this, this trigger. So just click the delete trigger. And let's rename this hotspot in the timeline just to make it easy to identify. So right now it's called hotspot one. Let's just call this drop target and I'll close my timeline. So we haven't really changed anything with our interaction other than we just added an extra shape that we want to use as the drop target. So let's go back over here to form view and instead of box one, let's change the drop targets here to our drop target. And this is a quick way that you can update your freeform interactions just by changing the target here. So let's go ahead and preview our interaction. So preview. And now we have a drop target that's a lot smaller, right? And everything is lining up nice and neat. So this is perfect and it's exactly what we wanted. All right, so in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at a few more options for ways that you can customize your drag and drop interactions in Articulate Storyline 360.